Grace and peace to you today. Today we're taking a look at Isaiah chapter 58, verses 9b through 14. And it begins, Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Here ends our reading. A little bit of history helps inform this reading today. The book of Isaiah has three main errors in which it takes eras in which it takes place. It starts out with Israelites living in the land that they've been promised by God and Jerusalem being a thriving city. Then Jerusalem is conquered and the second era is when many of the Israelites were living in exile in Babylon, particularly the wealthy, the well-educated, and the powerful, those who would be able to cause problems to a foreign ruler and rile up the people to revolt, perhaps. Those displaced people are sometimes called the diaspora. Then the third era in which our reading uh, today takes place, when those folks who were exiled are allowed to come back and they begin to rebuild the, the communities that they'd left behind. But as you'd expect, these days in which we live as well, when this rebuilding is happening, there are plenty of folks who are ready to take advantage of the situation, of the, the chaos that's going on. Vulnerable people were taken advantage of. There were conflicts over how to observe the, observe the Sabbath. Temple leaders were embezzling offerings that were meant to feed the Levites and, and uh, they were stealing money that had been given by the Emperor Cyrus to rebuild Jerusalem's temple. And then they blamed the lack of progress on the temple on foreigners that were getting in the way. Lines were drawn between peoples and the return to Jerusalem that seemed like such an opportunity for new life and community and with God became the same old corrupt culture that you see anywhere else. And so through Isaiah, God is calling them all back, both to spiritual and community faithfulness. God says just before this passage that essentially God has no need of their religious rituals if they're participating in economic and social oppression. God is connecting their religion and the rituals that they take part in together with how they live in community. God reminds them of the call to Sabbath and that it's not meant just for worship and certainly not meant for their own gain, but is both meant for their own rest as well as to make sure that the vulnerable, those who are serving them or um, are lower in the community and have less options, that they are able to rest as well. Removing the yoke is a common symbol for economic and political burdens imposed by the overlord, so removing those from people. God is saying that the way in which they live in community must align with their faith. But it's not all condemnation here. But God seems to say that to live as such brings a good life to the whole community, not just those who are disadvantaged that they're trying to look out for. This disconnect or compartmentalization of our faith life and rituals and our religious life over here from our lives out in community is something that we experience on a daily basis. We receive God's forgiveness but we don't work to forgive others or see them as more than their worst traits. We hear of God's grace for us, that there is no way for us to be worthy of God's gifts for us, yet we expect others to be worthy before giving them any aid. We end each service here in this place being sent into the world to love our neighbor or to serve the Lord, and 
rarely think about how our life outside of this place is meant to be a reflection or even a manifestation of our worship inside of it. And according to our reading in Isaiah, a lot of what, looks, uh, what that looks like is giving to others the grace that God has already given us. I think that the description of what happens when we live like this is important to note. Isaiah seems to say that this isn't about some people winning and some people losing. It's not about kind of equaling out the scales even necessarily. It isn't as simple as some people sacrificing so that others can gain. But Isaiah seems to say that all people benefit when this kind of grace and care is lived out. I love that Isaiah essentially um, destroys the dichotomy of winners and losers that we often live by and says that what we're striving for is a community that is good for all people. Too often we get pulled into these dichotomies of winners and losers, especially when it comes to politics, but really in all places in our lives, we tend to think that way. According to Isaiah, it is a false dichotomy, a society and perspective that lacks imagination. And what God is working for is for the good of all people. And that is good news. This is where we end today. I hope that it's been helpful. Uh, if you want to continue the conversation, you're welcome to comment or uh, respond in an email. And we'd be glad to keep the conversation going with you. God's peace.